So the Undateables are back! Yay! I'm like so excited. Like I've been waiting for this for ages. Since like the last year or the last season. So yeah. So the Undateables are back and there's one person that I want to talk about straight away and that's Tom! Oh my god! He is so fit, it's unbelievable. Like, oh, like I saw him because I had to watch it. The undateables on Tuesday when I got home from work because um, I was working from Monday and um, I saw it all on my Facebook um, about Tom and I was like alright I'm not going to read it or look at it but I saw like everyone was going on about how good looking he is and how sweet he is and so yeah I was quite excited to see it and obviously when I saw the episode and saw Tom and I was like wow how is he single? And just the fact that he was nervous just made it him even cuter. It was just so sweet. So I'll start off talking about Tom. So Tom's 26 and he had Tourette's and Asperger's syndrome. And I remember I, like, I couldn't even really notice his Tourette's at all in the, the um, video. Like compared to the other people who have been on the Undateables who had Tourette's, theirs was vocal tics, his was physical. So I didn't notice it as much. Um, and he played rugby and he goes to the gym and he's quite buff and he looks really good. Um, and like I said, the fact that he was anxious and it just made him cuter. Like, I, I don't know if that was just me, but yeah, but it was quite a shame that he was single and he was so nervous when he is so good looking and he looks such a sweet guy and such a caring guy. It was just, I felt bad because I was like, I'd date Tom. Like, definitely, because he looks like such a lovely guy. Um, so his date, he went on a date with a girl called Megan, who's 22, and, and he seemed like so struck on her, like, because she was really good looking, and he was covering his mouth, and you could tell that he was really nervous, and you could tell, you could tell that he found her really attractive. Um, but the only thing that I didn't like was the fact that she was like, oh, so tell me about your, and he was like, my Asperger's. And she's like, yeah, and I was like, that's kind of not what you ask on a first date, like, just come out and say it, like, yeah, I would find that a bit like, what, why are you asking me about my Asperger's, like, I'd find that a bit, yeah, I like that they went horse riding um, after being at the pub, um, I, I thought that was a really good way to obviously relax and have a laugh on a date, whether it's like you would not been horse riding before or and you were kind of nervous or like yeah just relaxing I thought that was a really good way because then there's not the pressure so much to have eye contact whereas you're, if you're sitting like across the table from each other you're like oh he's not looking at me what, or whatever I think the horse rider was a good idea but it was like a really good date and I hope he's been on other dates or dated her again I really hope that it's gone well for him and I hope that that boosted his confidence and I'd love to know what happened really because he was such a sweet guy. Um, I'll talk about James. James was the guy we saw at the start of the episode. Um, James was 22 and he had Asperger's too and it was the beginning when he was uh, sort of refers to oneself as one all the time and my boyfriend said that that was a line from the Big Bang Theory. I don't remember that line myself but I've, yeah Probably, it sounds like something Sheldon would say, but yeah, um, he seemed like a lovely guy, very well thought and yeah, he seemed really nice, um, very proper, I don't know if, yeah, very proper, um, and he would love that he was looking for romance and it was when he was saying it's hard to know what went wrong because in a job interview you can ask for feedback and you can't do that with a girl he's got a point like I would love to know what's gone wrong on dates and relationships and things you never find out you never find out why they didn't call you back um, and that's quite an awkward thing and you never know how to improve or impress someone and especially on a date you've not got friends that can be like oh you shouldn't have done that kind of thing so I totally get him. His first date was with a girl called Chloe, who's 24. I liked that he sort of planned what he was going to say. If you find conversation difficult, it's kind of good to think about what you're going to ask someone. Because in 
if you don't, you sort of sit there and you're like, um, don't know what to say, I don't know what to ask, and your mind goes blank. I, I do that all the time. Um, the date seemed to go really well, and then he forgot to ask for her number and he ended up running and chasing, well, not chasing, but running after her. And I was like, oh my god, I was like, oh, it's so embarrassing. Like, But it was good that he did get her number. And then she didn't call him for two months. And I was like, oh, that was a shame. And then he went on another date with a girl called Susanna, who's 30. And she was quite a bit older than him, because he's 22. So that's an eight year difference. But I thought that kind of worked in his favour, because he seemed quite like older than 22. He came across that way. And he gave her a book as a gift. And I was like, oh, that's a bit risky. and. But it went down really well and they seemed to have so much in common. And it was when they were sitting on the boat and he was like, I'm, I'm just going to put my arm around you. Um, don't take this as being, what was it? Don't take this as being too forward. Don't think, don't think this is too forward. It is necessary. I was like, that's smooth. Like, I thought that was brilliant. I was like, oh my God, that was brilliant. And such a, like, seemed like such a smooth line. Like, I'm just going to put my arm around you. It's much better than the yawning thing. Then... Chloe was back, and they'd been on some more dates, and he was cooking her Sunday dinner. I want to know what happened. Why? Why didn't she call him for two months? Like that's quite a big gap. Two months it wasn't like a couple of weeks or nothing. And then they they seemed to get on really well. But I I thought Susanna and James got on really well as well. Um, so yeah, I'd love to, again. I'd love to know what happened because James was an interesting one. And I want to know what happened with them and cooking dinner and they seemed to get on really well. And they seemed really relaxed around each other, which was good. It was like no awkwardness and they seemed quite a match, but you never know what's going to happen. So, hmm, interesting. The other one we met was Tammy, who was 34. And she got septicemia and she ended up having um, surgery on her face. And I remember watching and I was like, I don't know how I would cope with that. But she coped so well and she was still so outgoing and she wasn't ashamed. And I I just think if I, that happened to me, I, I don't think I would have coped so well with it. And yeah, it was amazing and such an inspiration of I'm still me. I'm... I'm still going to put myself out there and yeah it is scary and yeah I look different but she just took in her stride and it was amazing. She had such a lovely smile and such a spark about her and it was amazing to see someone that happy, confident, you know I, I don't know how to put it into words. She went on a date with a guy called Gary. And he looked like a cute geek, you know, bald with the glasses and they went on a date and they were on a boat and um, the date seemed like really awkward at the start but then she sort of took it in her stride and took lead. Uh, that's what they showed uh, and yeah, the fact that she was just like, no, I'm just going to come out and I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to be bubbly and she was dressed amazing and it was just really, really good. She took out her pug mirror and he was like, oh, I like it. And she's like, I look like a pug and sort of something like that. And I thought it was so, so brilliant. And he took the fly out of her eye and oh, it was just brilliant. And then the compliment at the end, I was like, that's so sweet. And she was grinning and it was amazing. And there wasn't, we didn't see too much of Tammy, but I wish there was more of that date and what happened. Because we didn't even know if he called her afterwards or anything and I wish I'd I wish I knew because I really liked Tammy and I really want to know what happened with her because the the date did seem to boost her confidence in the dating again because she hadn't dated since what had happened and I'd love to know if it went well did he call her did they see each other again has she been on more dates and that's always what I feel like at the end of these episodes but I know normally they do a catch-up episode now so I can't wait to see what's happened or and yeah the first episode I think I've watched it about three times since it's been on on air it's, I just love the undateable so much and I think it's such a great show and showing that 
even with someone with a disability, mental, physical, whatever, we are all the same, we all get the first date nerves, we all want relationships, we all want love, we all want to experience these things. And I remember when I first heard about the show, The Undateables, if you watched my first ever episode of The Undateable, well, my first ever video, before the first one is even where I was so negative and I didn't like it and I wrote a complaint to Channel 4 well, how are you putting this on the air called The Undateables because the way the media portrayed it was that it was like sort of making fun a wee, wee bit but it wasn't like that and I just it's one of my favourite shows and I look forward to them all the time and I watch them on demand quite frequently even the older episodes and it's just a brilliant show and I can't wait until next week. I just can't wait. I'm like so excited. <laughs>